One of the best introductions I've ever seen was by a professor of mine. On the first day of class, she ran into the room holding a large hammer above her head and she said, is this a tool or a weapon? As you can imagine, all the students were very confused and murmurs of confusion and wishes to drop the course echoed through the classroom until one student said, it depends on how you use it. This idea that a hammer can be used as a tool to build great things or as a weapon that can hurt has stuck with me. In the genetic world, there's a lot of misconceptions and strong opinions that surround pregnancy. What we often fail to realize is how our opinions impact other people's decisions. Now, I'm not a mother, genetic counselor, or medical professional. I have, however, seen firsthand how families can feel pressured to pursue genetic testing and how our ideas of genetic disorders can impact other people. This is Lucy. She just turned one year old and she's learning how to walk. She loves graham crackers, her dog, her siblings, and her family. Lucy, however, is likely a little different from you and I, as she was born with mosaic trisomy 18. This means that instead of having two identical 18th chromosomes, she has additional pieces of a third 18th chromosome. Now, most babies born with mosaic trisomy 18 never fully develop and pass away before they're born or struggle with many health issues after birth. Lucy was born with a congenital heart defect, which means that she had holes in her heart, and she has overcome failure to thrive, had open heart surgery at only a few months old, and is currently going through chemotherapy to ensure that the tumors that were removed from her liver last month do not return. Now, most of us will have two copies of 23 chromosomes, one from each of our parents, giving us 46 in total. Traditionally, before medical advances were made, the only way to test for genetic disorders were through invasive methods, such as amniocentesis. Amniocentesis is where they will use a needle to go into the amniotic sac to extract fluid. And while this test is very accurate, it's also invasive and can cause miscarriage. Recently, however, with new developments in science and technology, non-invasive prenatal screening was developed. With just a finger prick or a blood draw from the mother, they can now look for the most commonly inherited genetic chromosomal abnormalities. So if someone has Down syndrome, they will have three 21st chromosomes when a typical person will, would only have two. These tests work with the mother's blood if there's a higher ratio of 21st chromosomes than her other chromosomes and the mother herself does not have Down syndrome. The test result will come back that the, the child does have Down syndrome. The most unique thing about these non-invasive prenatal screens is they can actually be completed at 10 weeks onward so the typical ultrasound, the gender reveal ultrasound that most of us know it by, is it can be completed at 20 weeks, and that visibly scans for abnormalities. But these non-invasive screens actually can be done at 10 weeks onward. So Lucy's parents at this 20-week ultrasound found out that something was very different about their baby. The ultrasound technician thought that Lucy only had half of a heart. So they went to a neonatal specialist and had a series of genetic tests, screens, everything you can think of done, and all the results came back normal. So why didn't these genetic tests and screens and ultrasounds and everything that Lucy's family went through not detect her genetic condition? What's important to understand is that non-invasive prenatal screening is never 100%. That's why it can be beneficial to pair it with other methods of screenings or testing. With non-invasive prenatal screenings, there's always a chance of a false positive where you'll get your results back and it will tell you that your child has a genetic disorder when they actually do not. There's also a chance of a false negative where you'll get your results back and it'll tell you your child does not have a disorder when they actually do. This is more common in cases where the entire chromosome isn't inherited. And this is exactly what happened in Lucy's case. Because she only has pieces of the extra 18th chromosome, the test wasn't sensitive enough to detect her genetic abnormalities. These tests can be very useful, but there are downsides too. Researchers are looking into the fact that as knowledge increases about non-invasive prenatal screening, 
Will people feel pressured to pursue this? If people feel pressured to take non-invasive prenatal screenings, it could change our ideas of genetic disorders, how we look at pregnant women, and how we look at people with genetic abnormalities. What's important to understand is that screening is optional. It's not a must-have. So if you and your spouse just you know, found out you're pregnant and you go to a genetic counselor and they say, would you like to test? Would you test your child? For some families, the ability to know that their child will be hurting or sick before they're born can be life-saving for the child and monumental for the parents. They have time to preemptively schedule specialists or caregivers to be at the birth. They have time to connect and join help groups that have people who've been through what they're experiencing. Some families, these non-invasive prenatal screens create more issues and cause more turmoil and stress than if they just found out about the child's genetic disorder at their birth. Sometimes these non-invasive screens can't even detect the child's genetic disorder, like in Lucy's case. We as a society can work together to be better at understanding these genetic tests and not pressuring each other into taking them. Maybe instead of looking at these genetic tests as telling us what to do or who we are, we should look at them as that hammer. If we look at these tests and we let them tell us how we feel about genetic disorders or how we feel about our children, they become a weapon. But if we use these screenings to enable us to make better decisions, to inform us about the child on the way, they can be an invaluable tool. We need to be more conscious and supportive of families like Lucy's. Non-invasive prenatal screening is only one thing on the road to pregnancy. And as a society, we can do better to not only support families in the decisions they make, but allow them to choose and support their decisions. Thank you.